So hello everybody one more time, Andrew Sevilla here, and I'm very happy to be sharing this video on English vowels with you. Uh, a lot of what we're going to be covering here is in your anthologies, and it's also in the PowerPoint presentation I sent via email. So I'll begin with a few general aspects about vowel sounds, and the first is that unlike consonants or the articulation of consonants, in the, articulation, in the articulation of vowels, the articulators do not come together or, or very close. Um, and the passage of air is relatively unobstructed. All English vowels are voiced, so voicing is not a criterion that we will use in the description of vowels. Remember that in consonants we use to describe them in terms of voicing, place of articulation, and manner of articulation. None of those criteria will be used here. Instead, we will be using height, backness, roundedness, which is also sometimes called roundness, and from time to time, we will be speaking about tenseness. We will see how is it that we're going to be putting together the descriptions for vowels. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically that uh, in this introductory slide. I'm now going to move on to the next slide to show you something which is called the vowel quadrangle. A lot of people call it also the vowel chart or the vowel, what is it, trapezoid. Um, we're calling it quadrangle here because that's what it is. And here what you have is basically a graphic representation of the English vowels from, you know, front vowels to central vowels to back vowels here. Do not worry and do not be too intimidated by those weird symbols. We will cover them in detail as we move on. All you need to know for now is that whenever you see this vowel quadrangle, you should imagine the vowels as happening inside the speech apparatus, as you can see it here in this diagram. All right, now we're going to move on to slide number 10 to go right, to go straight ahead into uh, English vowels in detail. And in this video, we're gonna be covering four of the front vowels, and those are E, the tense E, E, and then we will be covering the epsilon vowel sound, which is E, and finally we're going to be covering the A diphthong. So let's start with the so-called long E. Now um, I'm going to begin with a clarification here. We're calling this long E just uh, for pedagogical purposes. Uh, in, in reality, any vowel can be long and any vowel can be short. And if you don't believe me, listen to a song and see what the singers do with the vowels. Uh, the bottom line here is that we're using long and short sometimes in order to simplify matters. But, you know, when you become linguists or when you study linguistics more formally, you will see that the idea of long and short vowels is actually an idea that do, they do not use too often in the professional description of these segments. So, but for now, in this anthology and in this PowerPoint presentation, we're calling it the long E. Um, the full description for that vowel sound is front, high, tense, unrounded. Why is it front? Because if you look at the vowel chart that I presented to you a few seconds ago, it's here. So in the vowel quadrangle, that E sound is very high. It's also, um, it's also front, it's at the front here. The, the, the tongue needs to, you know, push forward in order to produce this sound. And it's also tense because your muscles, when you produce the E as in please and see and, and read and all that, it's very tense. Uh, your muscles come very tense. Your tongue is tense. So that's why we call it also tense. And it's also unrounded because there is really no rounding of the lips when you produce it. So the full description would be a front high uh, te tense, unrounded vowel sound, okay? That's the full description, and we're going to be talking about full descriptions later on, um, and the symbol is this. Now, there are many more symbols for this, uh, but probably the most professional and, you know, linguistically accurate symbol for it is just the regular E, as, as you know, as whenever we write a word in English and it has an I, okay? Here's, here are some examples with that so-called E sound. It's very tense, like I said. Uh, and here is, for example, eat and please. Notice how eat is different from it, which is a lax vowel, which we're going to cover in the next slide. 
So we have bid as opposed to bit. And we have either and key and need and mean and police uh, and need and t he lead as opposed to lid, eel as opposed to pill, eagle, and so on and so forth. Okay, so all of that is very high, all of that is very front, and all of that is very tense and not rounded. Now, here are some common spellings for for the tense e. Uh, so it can be spelled as, as e, as in he and seen. As double E as in C and heel, as E A as in East and Teen and Eat, as E as I E as in Knees and Either, and so on and so forth. If you go to slide number 12, you will see more examples which you can study at home uh, and, and then you know practice this. The key to achieving a, an, accurate, an accurate pronunciation for this vowel symbol or sound, which we don't have in Spanish, is to you know repeat the words a number of times until you get them perfect. Right. Uh, let's move on next now to the second uh, vowel sound, which we're going to be covering in this lesson, which is the so-called short a. My favorite description for that is actually not short a, but lax a. Why is it lax? Because your lips are very relaxed when you pr when you pronounce this 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 vowel sound. Um, it's a sound that could be said or could be conceived as something between tense E and, and E, uh, as in Spanish, um, eje. Uh, you, you will see that this symbol in English is also used to represent the diphthong, so, uh, but we will talk more about that in future lessons. And so <clears throat> the full description for this is uh, front, high, lax, unrounded vowel. Why is it front? Because again, if we go to the vowel quadrangle here, you will see that it is front because your tongue pushes to the front. You will see that it is also high because it's your your, your, your tongue is also high up. It, it comes close to the roof of the mouth and it's also lax. Like I said, when you say, for example, bit, little, sing, there is not much of tension in your lips or in your tongue. And it's unrounded because you don't protrude your lips when you produce it, right? I'm going to show you a few examples for that lax A. So one is ship as opposed to sheep, which is tense. Miss, winter, lip, into, slip, fill, give. And then you have pen, and bit, and listen, and little, and ill, as opposed to eel. Uh, and then you have sip, and live, and fifty, and lift, and dip, and etch, and instant, is, sit, Ten, give, timid, minute, although you can say minute as an adjective, but that's a different word. And then you have inch and if and still and dill. Right? Some common spellings include why, as in, you know, gem, system, syrup, rhythm, symbol. Uh, another common spelling is U I, as in build. Isn't that crazy? Build, guilty, pick, and guitar, and quilt. And it can also be spelled I, as in lip. You know, notice how this is different from leap. You know, as in the verb to, you know, leap uh, or leap here. Uh, and then you have with and gift and differ. Notice here how the stress goes in a differ. Uh, a common mistake is for people to say differ. Well, that's technically a mistake, so you say differ. And um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Here's a um, Here's a graph showing a comparison between the so-called long E and the so-called short A. I'm not going to go into details. But what you need to do at home or wherever you are taking this lesson is provide a full transcription for each of these, of these words here, and they are minimal pairs. That means that each word has a pair which is very similar except for one single segment. In this case, the segments are obviously the, the tense E and the lax A. So, for example, provide a phonetic transcription for least and one for list, one for heat and one for hit, one for leave and one for live, uh, one for deed and one for did, one for chip and one for cheap, and so on and so forth. Take a few minutes to do this exercise, and now I'm going to move on to the next pair of vowel sounds, which is the first one is the so-called long A. Now, technically, this is not a pure vowel. This is a diphthong, as you were able to see in the video, in that 24-minute video by Hadar, uh, in the series of videos of the English way, 
in the YouTube channel, which you did at the beginning of this lesson. Uh, this is a diphthong, and it means that, you know, diphthongs are realized or produced by, you know, beginning with a vowel sound and then moving on to another vowel sound. And so in this case, what we do is we begin with an E, and then we move on to the E symbol or sound. So you have a word such as same, uh, you, that's what you do, you produce a diphthong. You don't say, you know, you don't say back, but you say bay. Uh, because if you say back, then that's a different word. And then we have some, we have a few a few examples. Oh, before I give you the examples, here is something very important. A lot of people like to represent this sound as as with the Spanish e. Um, my favorite representation for that is an an uh, an e and a and a j here here, which is technically a palatal approximant, as we studied with the you know with the consonant symbols a few weeks ago. So a word such as eight would be represented like this, like this, and like this, plus a T here, right? And then way would be represented with, you know, slash, W, and then, and then this E here and this J here, which is not really a J, but a palatal of approximate sound. And then you have some examples, you know, eight, same, day, aim, they, obey, apron, blame, way, bay, frame, say, age, came, table, stay, late, and so on, and so forth. Spelling rules, it could be spelled A, it could be spelled A-I, A-Y, and E-I-G-H. Isn't that crazy? So you have words such as late, main, day, eight, sane, fail, bay, wait, and so on. Uh, of course, if you, you know, listen to somebody who's not from the U.S. pronounce this, there might be variations, you know, I think you have heard me speak about, you know, UK English or Australian English where things can be very different. So my best word of advice here is for you to keep an eye open for these differences and then, you know, put it in your list of very interesting things about English pronunciation. And then we have something called, uh, you know, again, for pedagogical purposes, we're calling it the short E. But, um, the, the name for that symbol is an epsilon, and it looks like a capital E, but it's not really a capital, I'm sorry, a capital E. It's not really a capital E, it's, it's simply a symbol that comes from a different dimension, uh, and it is, it's, it's a much shorter sound than, than A, and it's a front, mid, lax, unrounded vowel. That's the full description for it. Here we have a few examples. Careful here, because in Spanish we have a similar vowel, which is, you know, not E. But that's a little bit different. Uh, this one in English is much more powerful, and it's the vowel sound you will find in words such as rest. Notice that in Spanish we would say rest, you know, and we say ele, and we say elefante. So that e sound is 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 less powerful than the English e. In English, you really need to, you know, you need to get into character and say any rest, red and present and present and wet and, else, bed, next, egg, melon. And this is why you can tell when somebody is probably not, not a native speaker and he's, you know, just starting to learn English and he says, for example, melon or melon. It sounds more like the Spanish E. Eh. In English, melon. Spelling rules, you have them here. You can study them from, you know, on slide 21. And the next thing I want to do before I you know, end up overwhelming you with too many minutes in this video is show you a transcription exercise that you're going to be doing at home. Uh, it's similar to the, it's not similar, it's just the same as you did with the with the tense and the next is. And what you need to do is provide the full transcriptions for each of these uh, words. And you have met and made, bet and bait, uh, fed and fade, less and lace, let and late, red, raid, wet, weighed, and so on. So go ahead, transcribe that, have fun. And in next class, we're going to be looking at the ash symbol. And let me anticipate that this is a typo. This is actually called digraph without this A here. It's a common mistake. You don't call it diagraph. It's, it's actually what happens is that so many people say diagraph that we ended up writing that in the PowerPoint presentation, but it's actually digraph. Uh, I'll talk more about that in upcoming videos for now. Just uh, watch this one, do the transcription exercises, and please get, uh, you know, 
write write to me or send me an audio if you have any questions have a wonderful week